will sweep me. My love 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 will s
I know you are afraid. I know you have crossed 12 hours. I know you have crossed 24 hours. I know you have crossed 36 hours. But you are about to enter into the 48 hours. Child of God, wherever you are, begin to pray. Begin to lift up your voice. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Lift up your The covenant keeping God. Bless the Lord, Yahweh, somebody. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. He's the covenant keeping God. The covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, 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 the covenant keeping God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lift up your hands wherever you are standing. You see, this song is a warrior song. This song is a song that you are putting God to his word. That he is the covenant keeping God. I'm here to announce to you, child of God. I don't know, but I feel like telling somebody that I know you are praying for 48 hours. But the one that is keeping the covenant is God. The one that keeps the covenant is God. And so if you can engage God in your frailty, if you can engage God in your humanity, if you can engage God in your weakness, if you can engage God even though you are tired today you are about to put God to remembrance about the covenant that he has with you as a child of God and so whilst we sing in a song one more time for the next few minutes uh, I need you to sing this song like a warrior I need you to sing this song as a prayer I need you to sing this song lifting up your voice lifting up your heart and lifting up your hands before God that God you are the covenant keeping God and put God to that remembrance and let God remember you one more time. Come on. You are the covenant keeping God. Yes, Lord. Yahweh. Yahweh. The covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. 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 The covenant keeping God. Lift up your hands wherever you are standing. Say with me in the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. Say in the name of Jesus. Say this afternoon. Say we declare. We declare. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Let's 
if you don't mind, let's all kindly come forward. Let's all kindly walk up to the altar. I love the afternoon prayers. I love the afternoon prayers. The afternoon prayers is where I believe that in your felt, in your tiredness, God begins to meet you. And the afternoon prayer is the one that prepare you for the grand one. Uh, the servant of God has got a word for you. Pastor John Hannah has got a word for you. But you need to prepare yourself. You need to prepare your heart. You need to come here with an open heart and an open mind uh, in order to receive from what God has for you. And so this afternoon, uh, I want to exalt you a little bit, uh, but we want to pray. Tell somebody we're going to pray. I know you've been praying since yesterday and God is faithful he has still granted you the grace the strength, the energy to still be able to travel and so if you are here I need you to shout and thank and bless Jesus come on put your hands together and give God your loudest praise whilst we are standing we want to thank God for our global lead pastor our father oh the conveyor of the vision the man of God our pops our daddy the man come on church you know it is not easy to put a program like this together 48 hour non-stop prayer and this is a man that is audacious in the things of God this is a man that is courageous in the things of God this is a man that is bold in the things of God this is the man that will go every extent to make sure that your spiritual life is activated because as a child of God if your spiritual life is not activated if you are not supernatural you know one of the things why I love 48 hours is is because we, 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 the super meets the natural the super means the natural mm. and so the supernatural is activated mm. uh, and, and yesterday and uh, i think the, the beginning of it reverend mendoku said it reverend Piakoff is the prophet said it that 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 a, a church that doesn't pray is playing a church that doesn't pray is playing and i thank god that you are not playing this afternoon that's why you are before the altar of the lord i thank god that you will lift up your holy hands and begin to lift up prayer intercede for the body of christ intercede Intercede for this nation, intercede for your family, intercede for everything that concerns you. Lift up your hands wherever you're standing right now. Now say with me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. Say with me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, say today, I declare by prayer, say, Oh God, arise, say, Arise, and let your enemies be scattered. Say, Arise, and let your enemies be scattered. Arise, 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 arise. The reason why it is important for you to pray, the reason why it is important for you not to give up, the reason why it is important for you to go before God or come before the altar, ah, uh, the seventh time or the eighth time or the ninth or the tenth time, uh, is because the more consistent you are, the more you are closer to the ears of God. And so the other day, the prophet of God, Elisha, he prophesied that according to his word, there shall be no dew or rain. Then the Bible goes ahead to explain to us and makes us understand that when he prophesied, he didn't just prophesy, he prophesied, he asked the king to go. But the Bible said he climbed the mountain top and the Bible said he put his head between his knees and he began to engage God. And I know that you are here not to engage man. I know you are here to engage God because if you are here to engage man you could have picked up your phone if you are here to engage God you could have gone on social media but you have come here to tarry before the altar of the Lord you have come here to tarry and wait on God for the supernatural because a church without the supernatural becomes superficial and we refuse to be a church that is superficial we refuse to be a church that is carnal. We refuse to be a church that does not activate the things of God. And so the Bible said when Elisha was praying, he prayed the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. When he prayed the same time and he sent his servant, the Bible said the servant came back and he said, I see nothing. Mm -hmm. I see nothing. 
I see nothing. Mm. But even in his wickedness, because six is the number of man, as you know and as I know. But as he began to engage God, even in his humanity, oh. the Bible says that when he prayed the, se- the seventh time and asked the servant to go and check, the servant came back and the servant came back. When he came back, he said, I can see mm. Mm. a cloud mm. that has gone in. Mm. I can see a cloud no bigger than the hand of a man. Other definitions, other versions say, I can see a cloud as a fist of a man. My God. As a fist of a man. And when Elijah heard the word, he knew that God is about to release it. Because when, the, because, because he, when you pray and you engage the hand of God, and I want to read my Bible, give me that scripture and I'll read the Bible. And you know what's funny? The, the servant said, I see it rising from the seas. And sea is a representative of turbulence. Sea is a representative of storm. Sea is a representative of unstableness. And I don't know what is unstable in your life. I don't know what you are dealing with that brought you to 48 hours. I don't know what you are dealing with that is a storm. I don't know what you are dealing with that has become a weight on you. But today I came to announce to somebody under the sound of my voice that there arise from a sea. There's a a hand of God, a hand, a hand of God, yes, a hand of God, yes, the hand of God, yes, the hand of the Lord. As the Bible says, when he saw that, when the servant told him that, he knew that God has answered. There's a certain dimension of prayer that you cannot give up because. When, when the Bible says, I, I like the version that said fist, because this is your fist. And today we are going to pray to God to release whatever is in the fist of God. Yes, Lord. Yes. We are going to pray to release whatever is in the fist of God. Yes, Lord. Because when he prayed and he saw that Elisha understood, mm-hmm. and so he continued to pray. And when the fist of God was released, there was abundance of yes. rain. And today I don't know what you lack My in your God. life, but there's going to be abundance of rain, yes, abundance of marriage in the yeah. building, abundance of contract, yeah. abundance of family, yes. abundance of children, yes. abundance of scholarship. Yes. Abundance of family, there's simply going to be abundance. Kabadas, whatever, lift up your hands. I need you to begin to lift up your voice. Begin to engage the hand of God. Begin to engage the hand of God. Begin to engage the hand of God. Under, 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 under
Yeah, 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 yeah
How do I know? Jabez is an example. That's true. The enemy can put, and it can be through anything. It can be no fault of yours. It can be through your parents. It can be through your circle. It can be through your past. They can sew a garment and fit it to you. And people will begin to know you not by your original identity that God gave you, but by the garment of the enemy. Give me, give me, give me Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. And today we are going to exchange every garment that the enemy has placed on us. Well, garment, you see, garment is simply your outward covering. Mm. Mm. It's, it's simply your outward covering. Or your outward appearance. Now what the enemy does is that he uses your outward covering to determine your appearance. And so some of you are born very honorable. Some of you are born very wealthy. Very, very, very strong. But the enemy has put sickness on you. The garment of sickness. The enemy has put the garment of shame. The enemy has put... And, and you have to understand that right from the Bible, right from the beginning, garment was very relevant. Because right from the fall of man, because he, when men fell or when man fell and they lost the glory of God, the, the man became naked. Because when God came to the garden, he asked Adam, Where are you? Why are you hiding? He said he was naked. Why was he naked? Because he felt that the glory that was covering him has left him. So, what did God do? God, the Bible says in Genesis, I think chapter 31, Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible says, And God began to sow, he sowed them a garment. Your covering is very important. Mm. Your covering is very, very important. It's true. And today I believe that after 48 hours, God is about to change yes, somebody's Lord. covering. Yes, God yes, is Lord. about to change somebody's yes, garment. Yes, you see, the Lord. Bible said, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And that's what we are doing here. We are more, give me, give me, give, no, give me verse, verse, start from verse 1. 61 verse 1. 61 verse 1. 61 verse 1. If you have the New King James Version. The Bible said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2 says, verse 2 says, verse 2 says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that moon. Now verse 3. Verse 3 said, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Them that mourn in Zion. Them that travel in Zion. Them that pray in Zion. Them that come before the altar of the Lord. Mm. To give unto them, and these are the things that when you come before God, these are the things that you get. These are the exchange that you get. The exchange of garment that you get when you come before the altar. That's why it's important eh, that when you come to prayer meetings, like you don't come and join the numbers, but you Amen. come to make a difference in the numbers. Amen. Many of you have come just to join the numbers. I was at 48 hours non-stop prayer. What did you get from 48 hours non-stop? Because child of God, if you came here to tarry and you go the same way that you came, you must have one stay home. You cannot come here. And that's why thank God for the servant of God. He said he refused to leave here the same. And I don't know about you, but I'm refusing to live here the same because sometimes the enemy can make you complacent. The enemy can place you at a place of good when your best is just one prayer ahead of you. The Bible says, it says what? To give unto them beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. When you come before God, you get beauty. Because some of us, what we are dealing with is ugly stuff. What we are dealing with are stuff that you can't even share it with anybody. You are dealing with stuff that you yourself, you are ashamed of it. How then do you share for you to get help? But when you come before God, he exchanges your ashes for beauty. And today, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I sense in my spirit that there's somebody here yes, under Lord. the sound of my yes, voice Lord. that God is about to exchange. Yes, Beauty for us, then oil for joy for mourning. Then the garment of praise. Anytime you come before God, God will never leave you the same. God will, because God understands the relevance of garment. God understands that the garment that, because in, in the olden days in Israel, every status determined the garment you wear. The priests have their garment. The kings have their garment. Uh, the security of their garment. You remember when the Bible said when the queen of Sheba came to Solomon, when he saw even the apparel 
that the servants of, of Solomon were wearing. The Bible says she was shocked. Garment is very important. You see, because you see, you know, even 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 in in, in, in a secular world, they say you'll be addressed by how you dress. And if they know that you'll be addressed by how you dress, how much more in the spirit? There are certain garments when God plays on you, the enemy can have a hold on you. There are certain garments when God plays on you, you begin to dream. There are certain garments when God plays on you, you begin to have favor. There are certain garments when God plays on you, his glory shines upon you. And so your marital doors are open. There are certain garments when God plays on you, he breaks the seal and the yoke of every curse in your life. And I don't know how desperate you are to change your garment on the altar of the Lord. But if you are desperate as I am, and you are ready and willing to travel, Today, 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 Saturday, today, 25th. Ah, God is, as you are entering the 48 hours, God is about to change your government for good. Amen, 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 amen. The government of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I know many of you here on the sound of my voice, you are dealing with the spirit of heaviness. Many people are dealing with the spirit of heaviness. Many people are dealing with the spirit of heaviness that is breaking their neck. But the best place to be is the altar of the Lord. Because he said, come ye that are heavily laden. Ah, I don't know who is heavily laden today. But if you will come before God in prayer. And feel free to pray. Feel free. Walk around and pray. Because in this engagement, eh, as much as it's a corporate prayer, it's also you and God. Don't watch anybody. Don't let anybody distract you. Don't let anybody and don't let anybody's prayer distract because some people, they just came to watch people who are praying crazily. You don't know the problems that they are dealing with. Some people are dealing with heavy, heavy, heavy and heavier with matters. And so when they come here, they pray to God like they've got, they, their life depends on it. Their life depends on it. You are praying to God like you've got something to lose. You don't want to sweat. And so, and man, yesterday I was telling somebody at the front, when the prayer was heated and going on here, they were out there taking selfies. Say, hey, I was here 48 hours. And I said, you see, you are the same person that will go out there and say, God did not hear your prayers. Meanwhile, when the prayers were going on, you were taking selfies. Are you ready to change your garment? Are you ready to change your garment? Garment, you see, the enemy can accuse you even based on your garment. The enemy can accuse, the enemy can say you don't deserve it. The enemy can say that, you know, he, he doesn't even deserve, based on the garment that is placed on you. Amen? 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 And today we are going to pray. We are going to, any garment that the enemy, whether it's from where we were born, whether it's from our past, whether it's from a mistake we did or made, whatever it is that has placed a garment on you, that is disfavoring you, that, that is causing disappointment, whatever it is, whatever it is that has the enemy has done, or it, it doesn't matter even if you gave room for it. Because the Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be set free. So even if you gave room for it, whether it's your mistake, your problem, whatever it is that has given the enemy an occasion to accuse you before God and men, today let that garment catch fire. 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 Those of you see that come on, let's stand up, let's stand, let's stand. It's standing in the gap. It's 48 hours. We are almost there. We are almost there. Come on, begin to pray right now. Let the garment catch fire. Let the garment catch fire. Kadaba do kadaba. I don't know the garment that the enemy has placed on you. I don't know the garment. Ah, the garment of shame. The garment of poverty. The garment of barrenness. The garment of loneliness. Today, let it catch fire. Are you praying somebody? Are Clap your hands. Clap your hands and stomp your feet. Begin to pray. Let the garment catch fire. Ekada 
Madaba, Yakada Madaba, Yatini Madaba, Lebra Kadaba, the Alaba, Lepo Kadaba, Rapa Padaba, Yatini Madaba, are you praying somebody? Rapa the Adabadaba, Lebra Kadaba, Rada Badaba, Rada Dada Dada, Yatini Mada, Yakadaba, Lebra Kadaba, Adabadaba, Adabadia, there's fire in the building, Rapa the Adaba, Lebra Kadaba, Yatini Mada, Lebra Dada Dada Dada. He had a bada bada ba, libra da bada ba, he had a bada ba, rapa da bada ba, a tapa da baya ba, a papa ya ba, libra kada ba, a papa da ba, libra kada ba. Are you clapping your hands? Are you praying? Let the comment catch fire. Any evil comment, any evil comment, let it catch fire. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Okay, now, 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 okay, now
Do it, 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 do it,
together for Jesus. Today your garment must change. Your garment must, the garment you brought to 48 hours non-stop prayer, you are not living here with that same garment. And you have to understand that garment is so critical. You see, the enemy can only accuse you based on the garment that you are wearing. That's what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8. He said, let your garment be white always and let your head lack no oil. Any stain that has come upon your garment, any stain that the enemy has attached to your being, your identity, your garment, that people are identifying you. But you see, people, you see, sometimes, eh, have you realized that certain people, even when you say something about them, automatically people say, oh yeah, it's true. They probably haven't done it, but they say it's true. Or they have done it, but they say it's not true. It all depends on the guy. Sometimes the enemy can stain your garment. The enemy can stain your garment. He can stain your garment with poverty. The enemy can stain your garment with, with rejection. The enemy can, can, can stain your garment with barrenness. And today, any kind of garment, I don't know the garment that the enemy has placed on you, Jesus. but any garment the enemy has placed on you on the My altar God. of the Lord, when I call for the garment, you oh say, Catch fire. Catch fire. Are you ready? Are you ready to burn yeah. it? Are you ready to burn yes, it? Yes, sir. Are you ready to burn yes, it? Yes, sir. Oh, ask somebody, are you ready? When yes, I sir. call down, when I call the garment, I need you to aggressively say catch fire. Because you see, in this 48 hours, in this atmosphere, anything is possible. Anything, anything is possible. And, and if you are one that God has given you a testimony already, head to our up, put your, 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 your testimony there so we can share to encourage others because there's a lot of things that God is doing and today 
day being the last day pushing into the 48 <laughs> i don't know the garment the enemy has placed on you but as i call down the name of the lord jesus let the garment catch fire right now yeah. let the garment catch fire catch right fire. now let the garment catch fire say fire say fire say fire say fire say fire when I stand where you can shout, sound where you can you can call down fire. Uh, if the person standing next to you is getting or giving you cold attitude, it's okay. It's a big room, it's not filled yet. Find your space, find yourself somewhere to stand uh, because I'm about to call some dangerous garments, uh, and you need to put fire in those garments uh, because after 48 hours non-stop, uh, that garment must catch fire. You are living here with a garment of praise, you are living here with a garment of joy. The yeah of your marriage the garment of your liberty i don't know who i'm speaking to but i sense in my spirit to speak to three people in the building uh, that god is about to change your garment if you believe it put your hands together and shout garment when i call the garment you say catch fire are you ready are you ready yes sir the closer you are to the altar the better for you <laughs> because there's fire on the altar the great men of god that have climbed this altar the kind of prayers that have gone down from this altar up to the living room the throne room of god today i don't know but i am telling you with assurance and that is that's the reason why you see that's why that's the reason why i've taken off my shoes because the Bible said, wherever the sole of your feet will tread, I'm making sure that the sole of my feet is treading on the altar of the Lord. Because you see, when 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 you see the Bible said the Lord ordered the steps of the righteous. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> you see, they are traps. Oh, the enemy says snares and traps. <laughs> but when the Lord order your steps, <laughs> the Lord go before you with fire. <laughs> so whatever you step on, begin to burn tonight. <laughs> let every garment of poverty break when i mention it i mention it, you say catch fire catch fire and you need to say with aggression you need to say and those of you watching us online as well you need to say with aggression you need to say with faith you need to say with belief because the bible said what two or three are gathered in his name there he is god is in the building and tonight if you take advantage of the presence of god you will not live here the same poverty catch fire I can't feel you. Maybe I'm dealing with wealthy people on this side. So I'm going to go on this side. Uh, Poverty. Catch fire. Poverty. Catch fire. Barrenness. Catch fire. Barrenness. Catch fire. Shame. Catch fire. Shame. Catch fire. Lack. Catch fire. Lack. Catch fire. Mediocrity. Mediocre. Catch fire. Mediocre. Catch fire. Happiness. Catch fire. Loneliness. Catch fire. Singleness. Catch fire. Lust. Catch fire. Restriction. Catch fire. Rejection. Catch fire. Limitation. Catch fire. Self. Destruction. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. 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 Are you
of threes. Find a partner. The Bible says a three cut fold is not easily broken. Find a partner. Three. Three. Three people. Three. Three. Can be three, can be four. But make sure you find a partner. Make sure you are not alone. Because we are about to deal with the accuser of the brethren. And when anywhere there's accusation, you need a witness. And then the person standing next to you is your witness in the spirit. And so I need you to form small circles, not big ones, small circles, three, maximum four. Don't be alone. Don't stand there alone. Don't, this is a gathering of the saints. Don't 
be alone. Don't be a lone ranger because we're about to shoot missiles. And sometimes when you shoot missiles, you you mean you 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 mean good, but it can it can be set, something called friendly fires. So don't be caught standing alone because you don't want to be hit by a friendly fire. The Bible says in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter number three, Zechariah chapter number three, I'll uh, read from verse one. He said, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan, standing before the Lord, and Satan, and the Bible says, standing at his right hand to accuse him. Even as you stand before the Lord and praying, to, for a change of garment, Satan is accusing you before God. But thank God that the person he's accusing you to is both your solicitor and your judge. You didn't hear what I said? God is both your, your lawyer and is your judge. And the Bible says that standing at the right and accusing you, and the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you. Oh, Satan, the Lord who has chosen you, put your name there, put your name there, put your name, the Lord who has chosen Joseph's time rebuke you is not this a brand plucked from the fire are you not the brand plucked from a fire Kabasukata. Hey, Kalabadu Kadaba. I need you to look at the people in your circle. Tell them I'm a brand. Plug by fire. In other words, I'm a fire brand. Kadabasua. Tell them I'm a fire brand. I'm a fire brand. I'm a fire brand. Verse, verse 3. Verse 3. Verse 3 says. Verse 3. Verse 3. Give me verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and was standing before the angel. The reason why Satan could accuse Joshua, the high priest, and if, and, and if Satan can accuse the high priest, how much more you and I? The high priest of Israel, the chosen one, because the Lord referred to it that he has chosen Israel. And then and, and today, as you stand here right now, as you are praying, uh, Satan is accusing you before God the very thing you are praying against and for. The government you are praying against and the government you are praying for, both of them, Satan is accusing you. Why? Because you, the Bible says he was wearing a filthy garment. Now, I don't know the filthy garment that you are wearing today. It could be anything. It could be even the anxiety. It could be depression. It could be poverty. It could be barrenness. It could be, it could be frustration. I don't know the filthy garment that you are wearing because the other day Jesus said in the beginning it wasn't so. God did not create you to be depressed. God did not create you to be anxious. They're about to be anxious for nothing. Nothing. No categories. Nothing. And I don't know the kind of filthy garment or the kind of stain that the enemy has put in your white garment. But tonight, today, let that garment catch fire. Catch fire. fire. I can't hear people who are aggressive. Let it catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. And then I like the verse 4. That's what the redemption is. Verse 4 says, verse 4 says, then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him. It's very critical the person standing before you in this moment. Because God is going to use them to deal with some things, to remove some garments in your life through their prayer. So you better choose carefully. If you are not sure of the person, swap, switch. It's okay. But make sure, whatever you do, that you are in a group. And then the Bible says that he says, I'll read again. Then he answered and spoke to those who, are, those who stood before him. Say, take away the filthy garment from him. This is an instruction. Take away the filthy garment from him. And to him he says, see, I have removed your iniquity from you. I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich robes. In other words, rich garment. You know, the reason why the enemy, the reason why the enemy had the audacity, the reason why the enemy has the audacity to come to your house, the reason why the enemy has the audacity to interfere with God's blessings for you is because there's room for some filthy garment somewhere. There's room the enemy has stained your clothes as a point of contact that he can always access you. The reason why you are always deprived, that's why it's important that you deal with that because it is a spirit. Reverend Mendoku said the other day, he said that 90% of life issues are spiritual. They are demonic. He said they are demonic. And you have to, why, how come you are so beautiful, you are so pretty. The hair on your, the hair on your head alone can buy a plot your makeup 
your back, but still you are single. Anyone comes to you six months, one year maximum, just when you are about to plan for marriage, it breaks up. It is the garment. Because you see, glory is not in makeup. Glory is in the Lord. Come on now. And today, I don't know what you are dealing with. I don't know the specific area. It could be poverty. It could be lie. It could be rejection. Some of you, it doesn't matter who wants to help you. At the long run, they will reject you. You are dealing with the garment of rejection. Some of you, it doesn't matter. How, like, you can get a billion dollars today, but you will not know where the money will go. You will not do anything with it, but the money. Will. Some of you is the spirit of indebtedness, the garment of indebtedness. So any money that comes into your hand, you are not able to do anything meaningful. The money you lose, the money, and at the end of the day, you end up in debt. But today, by the word of the Lord, the person standing next to you, God is going to use them to remove any filthy garment, any filthy garment, and and you know you know the, the good thing about removing the garment when you remove the garment. When the, he, said, he, said, he said, and to you, I said, I have removed your iniquity. So when the garment is removed, because you see, Satan will only come to you by a door of sin. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes it might not be your, even yours, it might be something your great 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 grandfather did in your family. But because it's a transgenerational curse, it's a bloodline curse, you become a partaker of it without doing anything. And that's why you need to pray because some people, oh, me, I have not done anything. No, it is not about what you have done, it's about the bloodline you are coming from. Somebody has taken the family somewhere and has, uh, has had a ransom over your head before you were believing your mother was born. And so it is important that you lay the axe to the roots and now put it so that it can bear fruit. And today, anyone that has placed a garment on you, accusing you before God, say, Let it catch fire! Say, Catch fire! Say, Catch fire! Say, catch fire. Say, catch fire. I need you to stand firm, stand well, stand well, stand well. Stand well. Stand well. We are going to pray for the next 20 minutes non-stop. 20 minutes non-stop. Don't look at your clock. When the time is where I will tell you that the time is up. Don't look at your watch. Don't look like, don't ask somebody what time is it. No. Just pray. I am your timekeeper. When the time is up, the 20 minutes is up, I will tell you according to my clock, according to my time. And you have to pray. You have to pray because see, it is in prayer. It is in prayer. It is in prayer that garment is changed. The Bible said the other day that Jesus took uh, Peter, James, and John to the mountain. The, the mountain transfigured. And they went there to pray. It is in prayer that he got transfigured. Now watch this. When Jesus got transfigured, two things caught my eye. Peter said, let us build for you a tabernacle. You see, when you transfigure, when your garment changes, eh, people begin to favor you. When God changes your garment, eh, people begin to favor you. Another thing that happened, he said, then there was a voice of the Lord. And he said, this is my son, hear him. When God changes your garment, you are endorsed. And some of you who are facing rejection, all you need is a change of garment. You need a change of garment. And that change of garment happens at the altar of the Lord. It doesn't happen by wearing Givenchy or Prada or this. No, 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 no. It doesn't. In the realms of the spirit, even those things, they are dirty more than anything. Especially when you don't have Christ. I'm not saying don't wear this other stuff. That's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying, if that is where your identity is, that's what you define or identify your glory with, you have lost it. And in the next 20 minutes, I want us to travel. I beg you, travel. I beg you, travel. Travel. I tell you a share a personal story with you. When when I first came to Prophet Gideon, when, when when the Lord brought me to Prophet Gideon, when I came back from London and 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 and, and, and God brought me to him, <laughs> I didn't know anybody in terms of uh, the bishops, the pastors, and all those. I, I didn't know. I just I I I I I I have just the call of God has come and I decided to leave everything to serve and to follow the, the call through even though I didn't know where it was going to lead me but I trusted God now watch this whilst I was serving and minding my business and serving and trusting God people that were ahead bigger I respected I revered 
people that I'll do anything for. The same people call Prophet Gideon and told Prophet Gideon, this guy! And these are people who don't know me. They don't know me. They, they don't know me from anywhere. But they said they have heard. That's one of the, that's one of the, that's one of the channels of the enemy. The enemy come, when the enemy puts a garment on you, eh, you become a center of gossip. Now that gossip sometimes, you know, they begin to say all sorts of things. They begin to accuse you also because you see, the garment comes with accusation. Now there's, there's, there's envy where God blesses you and people envy you. That one is there. But I'm talking about when the enemy begins to intercept God's blessings for you through whispering. Bishops were calling him to tell him that he should cut me off. He should cut me off. Why? Because of how I, I look at the time. I mean, thank God, even now, I face those things, but God is faithful. God has proven my ministry. And so I thank God for that. So then, can you imagine then? They will call him. They will say all kinds of things to him. All man of the one bishop. My God, the man embarrassed me on the altar, on the altar, on the altar. Prophet Gideon has finished uh, uh, ministering and I was going to take his, uh, his iPad and, and, and his bottle, his stuff. The man embarrassed me. Like, I don't even have the right to come on the altar of the Lord. Mercy Lord. And that's what the enemy can do to you. The enemy can clothe you with certain things. Because he asked for money, watch out for though. Man does not work, and I told you right from the beginning that the garment is your outward appearance. What is in you may be good, but the enemy can package you wrongly. And if I don't, because you can't see what's in a human being, what you can see is what's on them, and that's why the enemy can spiritually repackage you. And so, when we talk about garment. If, if the enemy can accuse the high priest, think about it. How much more you? And tonight, any garment of filth, any garment the enemy has placed on your family, any garment the enemy has placed on, on your business, any garment the enemy has placed on you, say, catch fire! Catch fire. Say, catch fire! Catch fire. Say, fire. say, Father! Father. Say, right now, right now, in the name yeah, yeah, yeah. of Jesus, Jesus. shall we declare, declare. say, any garment of filth, any garment of shame, accusation, say, today, as I stand before the Lord, I declare, Oh God, say arise and let your fire, say let your fire burn every garment of shame, garment of barrenness, garment of lack, garment of poverty. As I clap my hands, I declare, oh Lord, let the garment say catch, say fire, 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 fire. Fire, 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 clap fire, your hands. Fire, 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 I'm a good, 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 I'm a
hurts. Clap your 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 hurts.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Representing the servant of God, the prophet of God, the father of this house, anyone or any group of people that are misrepresenting him in high places, in social circles, in clergy circles, in political circles, anyone, any group of people that are trying or they are conspiring to misrepresent him because of what he carries. The Bible says, he said, remove the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, Behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with pure vestments. In other words, pure garments. We're going to pray a simple prayer. Any group of people that are misrepresenting the servant of God in this nation and beyond, any group of people that are misrepresenting you, sometimes you deserve the contract. You deserve the marriage. You have worked hard for it. But there's someone the enemy has placed in your own circle. That is misrepresenting you, creating a different picture of you. And tonight, we are going to pray. Tell somebody we are praying. We are praying. Tell somebody we are praying. We are praying. We are praying. Oh, why have you gone to sit down? We are standing. You are sitting down. Come, come to the altar. Come to the altar. Let's pray. Come to the altar. Come, come. Approach the altar. Approach the altar. Let's pray. You have to understand that in the realms of the spirit, your garment determines your status. That's right. Your garment determines your status. That's right. And so in this house, Prophet Gideon, being the high priest of this house, his garment is different from any other person here. And that's why we have to pray that God will keep his garment pure all the time, that the enemy will not accuse him. Because the enemy is an accuser of the brethren. And you have to understand that the, accusa- the enemy can accuse you in a place of both true and false accusation. But tonight we are deploying the hand of God. 
any man, any woman, any group of people, any anyone that the favor of the servant of God is intimidating them in this nation. Jesus. That is misrepresenting him, misrepresenting this church, mm. your family, your, 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 yourself, whatever, wherever it is tonight in the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand. Jesus. The other day, the other day, Matthew chapter 22, verse 11. Matthew 22, verse 11. Matthew 22, verse 11. The Matthew 22, verse number 11. The Bible said, But when the king came in to see the guest, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. He did not have a wedding garment. He did not have a wedding apparel. He did not have a wedding. He was not dressed for the occasion. And verse 12 says, So he said to him, Friend! He didn't even address him as an enemy. He said, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? How did you come here? without a wedding garment. But the man was speechless. How did you get in this assembly without a wedding garment? How did you get here wearing what you are wearing? And that's why tonight on the altar of the Lord, you need to make sure that you don't live here the same. You see, the theme for this year's conference is dangerous. And that's why we thank God for a man that hears from God. Because, you see, you cannot live here the same way. You cannot live here with the garment that you came here with. He said the man was speechless. He was speechless that the man was not wearing, he was speechless. But today, you will not be asked that question, why are you not wearing the garment you are supposed to wear? Because God is about to place a garment on you, a garment of favor, a garment of opportunities, a garment that people, you know, there are some people, the last time, prof was praying for somebody here one Friday, and then the, the, the person was saying that, prof was prophesying and, and prophesying to, to the person and telling the person that they shouldn't give up because God has a, a, a great things in store for them. They, they shouldn't give up. They are, they are great. God has made them great. And then, and then the prof asked the person that, well, what do you do now? The person said that, I'm tired. I've given up, but people keep bringing me opportunities and contracts. There's a certain realm, man. There's a certain garment that God can place on you. It cuts off hard labor. You see, God can place a garment on you. Eh? So, so when you read, when you read the Zechariah, the Zechariah uh, uh, scripture that we read, he said, "I will clothe you with pure vestment." In other, I will pay you with other versions. I will, I will clothe you with rich garment. Have you seen? Have you seen? Have you seen certain people? When you see them, nobody will tell you, but you can tell that they are wealthy. They are rich. You can tell. And there are certain people too. When you see them, you can tell that they are drunkards, or they smoke. Or, or, or they are criminal. You know, somebody can be a hardened criminal. When you see them, you know that mm, this one is a criminal. Any garment the enemy has placed on you today, say, let it catch fire. Say, catch fire. Because in your garment, sometimes the enemy can create garment that and whispering spirits, then they begin to misrepresent you. Let's demand pure garment. Let's demand that God will clothe the servant of God with rich robes, rich garment. That God will, will, will because you see, when God clothes you with 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 with, with rich garment, with rich robe, it, you attract favor. Hard labor, you see, hard labor doesn't bring wealth. Though. The blessings of the Lord he maketh rich, and he added no sorrow. There's no sorrow in the blessings of God. There's no sorrow in favor. That's why there's one prayer you need to pray for. It's the prayer of favor. That God clothe on me the garment of favor. When Jacob placed on his son Joseph the, the coat of many colors, the spirit of favor came upon the boy. Yes, you'll be envied. So be ready for envy. But it is worth the envy because what you get from God, what you get out of it, oh my God. And tonight, I don't know. I don't know, but I want us to pray. I want us to pray that God will clothe the servant of God with the garment, the rich garment of favor. Rich garment of favor. Rich garment of favor. He said, I will clothe you with rich robes. When I read that, 
I was blown away. I will clothe you. God said he will clothe you. He will remove the stained garment. And then he will clothe you, not with any ordinary clothing, but he will clothe you with rich clothes. Rich clothes. Favorite clothes. And this is going to be our last prayer point. And I want us to pray. I want us to connect this prayer to the servant of God, to this house. One, anyone misrepresenting the servant of God in high places. Anyone misrepresenting empowerment worship center in high places. Anyone representing you, misrepresenting you in high places, your family, your business. You know, sometimes you go for a contract, you bid for a contract, and then you know you deserve, you have all the credentials, you have all the, uh, the capacity and ability to execute, and someone will go and say a word just the word to misrepresent you and then something that is due you supposed to come to you i've seen people that be in relationship and they, they were just when they were about to get married and somebody issued a word somebody misrepresented them somebody said something and that was the end of it people that big things were coming to them big opportunities were coming to them and somebody said something somebody misrepresented them and that was the end of it that will not be the story of your life. And I want us to pray. I want us to pray for another 20 minutes. 20 minutes. This is the last prayer for another 20 minutes. I want us to connect with anybody, anyone that is misrepresenting this house, that is misrepresenting the servant of God, the prophet. Uh, let them go down. Oh, I didn't hear you. Let them go down. Let them go down. go down. Let them go down. Go down. Say go down. Go down. Say go down. 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 Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Are you praying? Oh, no. 
Let's celebrate the servant of God, our father, the papa of this house, my father, the man of God, the visionary. Come on, somebody. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Come on, church. Let's make some noise. Let's thank God for this vessel. What a man to call our father. Amen. And let's honor the apostle. Reverend Bendoku, come on, church. Let's put our hands together. Let's celebrate Jesus right now. Lift up your right hand. Say, Father. Say, Father. Lift up your hand. Say, Father. Say, right now, I declare new strength, fresh grace to cross over in the name of Jesus. Don't you love Pastor Joseph? Come on, let's celebrate the pastor Joseph in the house. You clap and say what an awesome time of prayer. I was watching in the office and in the lounge and yeah. strong revelation and yeah. dangerous strong prayers. And I sense that you pull through some things. Amen. And your garment just got changed. Amen. And any voice of misrepresentation against you has been silenced. Come on, clap and give God. I love standing like God because it offers an opportunity to deal with the lie. To really deal with a lot. And I believe that a lot has been dealt with. AWC Live will take us for just about five minutes of worship. And I ask um, Apostle Ben Doko to come again for the second time <laughs> to give us a word. And so after AWC Live, for the next 40 minutes, the next voice you will hear after EWC Live will be the one and only Apostle Ben Doko, the man who has been such a pillar in my life all this year. And we are constantly having him for standing the gap. And he's ready for his second word. Come on, clap your hands, give God praise. So after EWC Live, we will see the ministry of the Apostle. Ben Duke, God bless you. Hello. Let the storm be rolled away. Stone of Egypt, stone of shame. Let Approach come to an end. Shifting to the promised land, strongholds are breaking, chains now be loosened, mine from heaven. Oh. See, we are your people. Show us your glory. See, let it pour life. Strongholds are breaking change. So we've been using generator and ECG, so we got to switch back to uh, generator, right? So um, that is no problem. Just that will be a five minutes maximum work. So that means I will be singing with our own voice and all that in between the switch. So you can come to the altar to sing. If you want to sit there, make sure you are singing. They stand in the gap, so make sure you worship. So we're worshiping without the. Um, 
the support of the microphone. So let your voice go out. God bless you.